Welcome to this Design Builder webinar, where our two main aims will be to explain what optimization is in a building performance simulation context, and to show a selection of case studies to illustrate how powerful optimization can be to help design high performance buildings. I'm Dave Cocking, and co presenting today will be Nishesh Jain. Andy Tyndale will join us and help to answer your questions at the end. So after this general introduction, I'll introduce some optimization background and concepts. Then the Shesh will show you how those concepts are implemented in the design builder optimization interface. Nishesh will use the model of a 5,300 square meter college campus building from a past optimization project to illustrate how he was able to optimize both the HVAC systems and thermal envelope of the building. I'll then show how optimization software has been used to design other high performance buildings via a selection of case studies. And I'm going to use different case studies to show different applications of optimization, uh, including a ground source heat pump system, a residential home, and a net zero office building. And in the last part of the presentation, I'll introduce you to some free resources to help you find out more about optimization, and also some new on-demand optimization training content for those of you that want a fast and effective way of adding optimization to your current skill set. So by the end of this webinar, you should have a clear understanding of the key optimization concepts, how those concepts can be applied in real world projects, and how you can learn more about optimization. We've allowed time at the end of the webinar for your questions. It's important to remind ourselves occasionally the value in effective modeling to improve building performance and how much it can help in the fight against climate change. What I hope you'll take away from this presentation is that optimization can take that positive impact to another level. We expect the webinar to last around an hour, including time at the end to answer as many questions as we can. You can submit questions at any time via the questions box in the control panel and also by emailing Design Builder. The webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link to the recording in the next day or so. Before I dive into the details, let's take a look at how today's optimization content connects to Design Builder more widely. Design Builder is a fully integrated, multidisciplinary simulation toolbox. It's a graphical user interface that enables you to use the global gold standard simulation engines, uh, and those include Energy Plus, Radiance, Open Foam, in faster, easier, and more productive ways. Design Builder is the most capable and mature third party interface to Energy Plus. And that is the simulation engine used by Design Builder Optimization. All of these engines are fully integrated with Design Builder's high productivity interface. So all these analyses that you see here can be run seamlessly from a single model. Once you've built your model, either by importing it from a BIM tool or via GBXML or IDF import, or by using Design Builder's industry-leading modeling tools, you can use that one model to assess energy, comfort, environmental performance, run a large variety of compliance and certification simulations, including LEED and BRIAM, and also run daylighting, cost, and CFD simulations. Design Builder also includes the most advanced scripting capabilities of all the mainstream simulation tools. Our focus today is on the optimization tools that provide powerful ways to run advanced cost benefit simulations. So now onto an introduction into the key concepts of design optimization. You people, you hear people talking about optimization models 
uh, or optimizing models all the time. But the word is used in very different ways and can mean very different things to different people. Optimization is often used to describe relatively minor or incremental improvements on an existing design. That is definitely not the context for this presentation. What we're presenting today is multi-criteria analysis using a genetic algorithm in an automated process that finds optimal design solutions for you. Optimization is an advanced form of cost benefit analysis and provides much more than minor incremental improvements. Until fairly recently, this kind of analysis was only possible within academia. It involved time consuming code based tools that were useful in a research context, but weren't viable for use by industry in the commercial environment. In 2013, Design Builder introduced the first commercially viable optimization tool in a mainstream software package. Since then, its capabilities have been significantly extended, making it a go to option for many progressive design firms. Now we're clear about the context of this presentation, let's take a look at some of the key concepts behind optimization and why optimization is an increasingly necessary part of the design process for high performance building design. A building is a complex ecosystem with thousands of different elements that interact with each other to determine how much energy it consumes, how much carbon it emits and how comfortable it is to live and to work in. These elements include fabric insulation, glazing, shading, HVAC and lighting, not to mention climate variations and many, many more things. If you change any one of these elements, it impacts on many or all the other elements, effectively causing a chain reaction. So for example, changing either the glazing size or the properties of a window can change the amount of light and heat gain to the space. The window changes will affect the solar heat gain to the space. Assuming there is daylighting control on the lighting, the changes will also impact the lighting energy and its heat input to the space. This changes the amount of heat absorbed or released by the thermal mass at any point in time. All of these things, change the amount of heating or cooling required, which changes the efficiency of the HVAC system. That in turn affects how much energy is consumed and how much carbon is emitted. So by changing just one design element, which we'll refer to as design variables from now on, we create all these chain reactions. This all means that trying to fully understand how to optimize a building design gets very complex very quickly. I'm sure you'll have seen or heard about many unintended consequences, negative consequences resulting from this complexity, such as summary overheating caused by well-intended energy conservation measures. So to design high performing, energy efficient and comfortable buildings and high productivity workplaces, we need to consider the building ecosystem, including its surroundings, much more holistically. Not just to look at its component parts, but also how each of those parts interacts with each other. There's a strong similarity here to sports and even business team performance. You can have the best individual players on the planet, but if they don't work to well together, it will not be a high performing team. This next slide gives a clue as to why that level of holistic analysis has not previously been possible by design teams using traditional iterative and parametric modeling methods. Let's consider the size of the design space which is the total number of permutations for all the possible combinations of design variables relevant to your project. The size of the design space is the number of design variables raised to the power of the number of choices for each variable. A variable might be the glazing size or glass properties that I've mentioned, or any other important design element. 
such as the amount of insulation or thermal mass or the HVAC and lighting systems and their controls. For each variable, you'll have a number of choices. So for example, in your HVAC system, you may have identified fan coils or VAV systems with traditional boilers and chillers or a VRF or ground source heat pump system. So this would be four HVAC system choices. If we included a total of 10 design variables with only four choices for each variable, then the table in this slide shows that it results in over a million possible design permutations. Manually assessing even just one relationship between a small number of design variables can take a huge amount of time and effort. For example, just choosing the glazing sizes and properties that deliver the best trade-off between daylighting, cooling and heating loads, especially when you factor in different shading options, can consume a huge amount of time. This is why design teams have previously been forced to resort to what works based on past experience and or rules of thumb. Trying to do anything more than that would have taken so long, it could literally have put them out of business. The answer to this problem of not having enough time to properly identify and assess the key drivers that will truly optimise the performance of a building is design optimization. And here's why. The whole point of optimization is that it does enable you to quickly and effectively search the whole design space to find the truly optimal combinations of design variables. It does this using a genetic algorithm, which operates on the survival of the fittest principle of natural evolution. Using this advanced algorithm, optimization provides the design team with confidence that they will have identified all the strongest potential design solutions. This is what the optimization process looks like in a flowchart. You set up the model and specify the objectives and constraints, plus the design variables likely to have the greatest impact. I discussed variables earlier, but haven't yet mentioned objectives and constraints. Objectives allow you to define what the success of a particular design is measured against. Typically, you would include two objectives to investigate the trade-off between two conflicting criteria, such as minimizing construction cost and operational energy consumption. They're conflicting, because as one increases, typically the other decreases. Constraints allow you to impose upper or lower limits on key performance indicators, such as specifying a maximum project cost or a maximum number of discomfort hours, for example. Constraints are a great way to help the optimizer avoid searching for solutions you don't want. For example, where the building exceeds your maximum project budget or exceeds a maximum number of hours where set points are not met. Once the optimization starts, it will generate the input files for Energy Plus simulations, which are then run in batches. The genetic algorithm assesses each batch of results to find the strongest solutions. The optimizer uses that information to generate future simulation input files specifying the design variable characteristics most likely to generate the strongest, i.e. the best, results. The whole process is automated and is repeated until the optimizer has found all the likely strong solutions in the whole design space. Once the optimizer stops finding optimum solutions, the process stops. The optimal solutions are plotted in red as the Pareto optimal front at the leading edge of the cloud of results points. And the results set will look something like this. The X and Y axes here show the objectives that the process is optimizing for. And in this case, it's to minimize net site energy consumption 
and the capital cost. The point cloud indicates the performance of all the simulations run during the optimization, and that's according to the design objectives that you set. Each point in the cloud is an individual simulation, and each simulation has a unique combination of design variables. The valid solutions that aren't optimal are shown by the white points. The yellow points are those that failed a constraint you've set. The red points at the leading edge of the point cloud, i.e. the Pareto front, represent those solutions that cannot be beaten in terms of the objectives you set. So for this result set, each point on the Pareto front represents a solution with a particular construction cost that has the lowest energy consumption and vice versa. One of the real strengths of this is that it gives you a range of optimal solutions based on your design objectives that can really help to focus discussions with the design team and the client. Those informed discussions can then help you choose where you want to focus your attention on the cost performance spectrum. I'm now going to show a short video and that will illustrate how the Pareto front develops for a small model. The whole process is sped up and gives a great insight into how the optimizer works to create progressively stronger solutions. As the video runs, you'll literally see how, as the new optimal solutions are identified, the solution set gets progressively closer to the minimum values on the X and Y axes. In this example, the design objectives are discomfort hours on the y-axis and operational carbon emissions on the x-axis. So I'll start the video running and straight away you'll see individual simulations form the point cloud and each of those points has a unique combination of design variables. The genetic algorithm intelligently selects the strongest solutions. The solution set migrates towards the origin through iteration as solutions get closer and closer to your design objectives. Notice how the whole result set gets closer to the origin and how a denser cloud of results also forms towards the origin. The Pareto front at the leading edge identifies the range of optimal solutions that in this example can't be beaten on both carbon and discomfort objectives. The Pareto front typically shows diminishing returns at each end of the curve. curve. So solutions offering a balanced trade-off between objectives are found closest to the origin. OK, so hopefully you now have a clear understanding of what true optimization in a building performance simulation context is and the key underlying principles involved in optimization. I'll now hand over to Nishesh, who will illustrate how these principles are embodied in the Design Builder Optimization Interface. Please just give me a minute for us to change presenters. Thank you, Dave. Um, I'll, uh, I hope you're seeing my screen now. Um, I'll be showing you the process of doing an optimization exercise in Design Builder. I'll first introduce the case study and the optimization setup requirements through slides and then move to the Design Builder user interface to show you how everything is set up. At the end, I'll come back to the slides and we'll briefly discuss the results of the optimization. So the project is a four story, 5,300 square meter teaching building in a college campus. There's a central corridor with teaching areas on either side. The main spaces include teaching areas, labs and staff and faculty rooms. Located within the tropics, the climate is hot and humid, and therefore with regards to energy consumption and comfort, cooling energy use is the most important factor. 
as cooling is the predominant energy use uh, in the building this study aims to optimize the fabric and systems to minimize both cooling and capital cost the design variable options available in this project are related to construction assembly external finishes shading design and space conditioning and lighting systems so therefore these will be the objectives that is minimizing cooling demand and minimizing the capital cost and these areas will be the design variables therefore through this analysis we would like to explore questions such as what is the most cost effective hvac system can the capital cost be reduced by having better performing envelope in place of an expensive high efficiency hvac system what is the most efficient shading strategy can we introduce shading to reduce the need for an expensive high performance glazing solution i will now briefly show the various design variables and their respective options envelope construction looks at the intended thermal performance and has options based on varying insulation thicknesses in walls and roofs the issue of thermal mass is explored by changing the location of insulation in the external walls and also by varying the thickness of the brick partition walls the window construction focuses on the u value of the windows various shading options deal with direct solar gains shading is a low cost way of reducing gains and can be used in place of a more expensive glazing besides u value another option related to the wall is the external surface finish solar absorbance of the outermost material is taken as the variable on the system side lighting is a source of significant heat gains and selection of hvac system also presents a trade off between capital cost and efficiency the options used here were those selected by the designers factoring in operation and maintenance issues as well all possible combinations of the design variable selected result in a search space of over a billion options now we move to the second part to see how the optimization was set up in design builder this is the case study building model that has been created from the architect's initial drawings look at the north arrow down here and we can see that the longer faces are along the east and west directions there is a central atrium in the top for daylight penetration in the center of the building i'll now go to the edit screen to show some of the model settings if we go to the ground floor we can see that the building has a central corridor and it has rooms on either side circulation office and teaching activities have been defined to the various spaces and you can see from the color coded key on the layout I'll now go back to the building level. Uh, in this project, the layout and activities are fixed according to the design specification, but there is scope to improve the construction, shading, lighting, and HVAC. So, as we discussed, these are the design variables in this exercise. I'm not going to review the model data tabs, but instead will show you the optimization setup dialog with some key data such as constructions that are used to. Uh, define as design variables after the base model is complete we have to follow the optimization flow chart which dave showed earlier in his slides the first step in there is to define the objectives and the design variables this is done on the optimization and uasa settings dialog which can be accessed from the toolbars on the top on the object uh, on the analysis type tab uh, we select the type of analysis in this case optimization and then we go to the objectives tab where both the design objectives are defined the design objectives for this study are to minimize capital cost and to minimize 
cooling demand. However, there are numerous other KPIs also available. For example, if we look at the list, then we have KPIs related to cost, energy and loads, environmental impact for uh, operational emissions, um, life cycle cost analysis, etc., and even unmet loads. And all of these can be used as objectives in various optimization exercises. The design variables tab shows the variables that I have set up for this analysis. For example, external wall U value, this one. If I look at the external wall, then I can edit it and then see there are 11 options that have been selected. Here is the construction options list and we can see the 11 construction options that I have created varying the location of the insulation, thickness of the insulation and, um, or, and they are named uh, accordingly and I have selected all of them as design variable options. Besides wall construction, Design Builder has um, uh, an, other variety of uh, design variable types such as um, constructions, you have glazing and shading options, internal gains, um, location, orientation, etc. Um, are also available to define as design variables. Custom EMS, custom IDF, and custom scripts are also new ones. Um, and um, I have used custom scripts to create a design variable in this example as well. So roof uh, and wall solar absorptance have been created as custom scripts, as you can see here. Uh, custom scripts can be used to directly modify any aspect of the model, including individual model data fields. Scripts can be used to define uh, custom KPIs as well. So you are not limited to the list of KPIs which come as default, but you can have any, um, practically any um, simulation result um, as an objective in your uh, model using scripts. Similar to external U value, um, otherwise we have um, roof, um, gla roof um, glazing, partitions, HVAC um, and lighting uh, also defined and shading for each of the four facades is also defined as the uh, design variable. Please note most of the design variables have target object at the, as the building. However, because shading has different design variable for each facade, Design Builder allows you to use um, custom selected uh, parts of the model as target objects. Mm -hmm. So for shading, appropriately oriented walls have been selected as the targets. Design Builder help and website contains vast resources, including tutorials and webinars, which we can uh, use to learn optimization setup process in detail. After I finish, Dave will be showing some of these resources that are available to you. Now with the optimization uh, setup complete, um, the next step would be to run the analysis as Dave showed to you in the conceptual slides. I'll skip that part in the interface itself and show you some of the results on the slides. So this is the finished result screen. Um, optimization was run for over a thousand simulations and it took about 12 hours and has a lot of information that we can analyze informing designers of various options they can choose. To assist with large simulations and complex optimization problems, Design Builder provides an option to run your simulation on a network server or on cloud. These can be your own internal servers or if you require, Design Builder provides a link to the Jest simulation over here, if you can see, and uh, where you can purchase and access Jest simulation servers 
uh, if you don't have access to your own um, uh, servers internally. We'll now take a, take a look at some of the key points associated with the results. So um, the total capital cost is shown on the x-axis and cooling energy is on the y-axis. Each dot represents each of the thousand solutions uh, which were simulated and red dots show the solutions that occupy the Pareto front. First and the most obvious pattern uh, I will highlight is these big floor clusters that point towards different HVAC systems. And you can see from this that an improvement in system efficiency has significant impact on cooling energy use with a relatively modest increase in cost. Second, within each of these HVAC system clusters, we have three lighting system subclusters. For example, in the VRF cluster at the bottom, on the Pareto front, we can see the impact of CFL, T5, and LED is much greater on cost than it is on cooling energy demand based on the caustic information of this project. Similar to this, other clusters and subclusters were analyzed and answers to the design questions asked earlier were sought. What we ended up with was uh, water cool chillers were better, with better uh, envelope can achieve the similar performance as VRFs, but with 3.5% uh, capital cost savings. Effect of adding insulation and thermal mass is also seen. However, adding insulation beyond the optimal levels provides diminishing returns. Also, shading with simple double glazing saves 3% capit capital cost for the same performance when compared to more expensive glazing solutions. There are obviously more inferences that can be drawn from this result, but the intent here is to show you the process. Also, we have a lot of optimization-based case studies and past webinars that you can find on the website some of which Dave will show you now. So over to you, Dave, now. Okay, good stuff. Thanks, Nishesh. I think that provided, Nishesh's presentation there provided a, a very good example of how optimization is quite different in that because there are so many results you have a result set rather than just one um, typical simulation result um, you know line individual lines for cooling heating whatever because it's a result set it really helps you to identify the performance trends that are resulting from the key variables and, and helps you to flush out those variables that are driving the building's performance. Okay, so I'm now going to move on to take a look at some different example applications of optimization. And I'll use some past projects to illustrate how optimization really can make a difference in addition to, to what Nishesh has just shown you. At the end of the webinar, I'll show where you can find out more details about all of the case studies that I'm about to show and some additional optimization uh, focused learning resources. So I'll start with a case study presented last year by Brendan Hall of, of CHA Consulting in Syracuse, New York. This project was completed for his previous employers, Karpinski Engineering, and in it, Brendan focused much of his effort on optimizing the balance between heating and cooling loads. Um, and that was because the heat rejection to and from the bore field has such a big impact on the size and cost of the ground loop and the overall um, cost of the project. These are complex interactions between the building and the ground. So it's another great example application for optimization. In this process, um, Brendan was able to identify the, the combination 
of energy conservation measures with the greatest overall combined impact, not just those energy conservation measures with the biggest individual potential without considering the whole picture. Brendan was able to reduce the ground heat exchanger length by about a third, which offset the cost of other energy conservation methods to further improve the design. This is an excellent example that really demonstrated the importance of intelligently combining key design variables for the maximum impact. The next project I want to show you was shortlisted for a, a SIBSI Building Simulation Group Award uh, in 2018. In this case, Arturo Ordonez of Solarc needed to significantly reduce the construction cost, carbon emissions and environmental impact of a new build house in Spain. Optimization was used to find the best trade-off between design variables that included window to wall ratios, thermal mass, insulation, glazing and shading. There were around 170,000 possible design permutations, but using optimization, Arturo was able to fully search the design space to find all of the optimum solutions. When compared to a typical house in that region, Arturo's design predicted a reduction of more than 47% in total carbon emissions, and that includes both embodied and operational carbon, and a construction cost saving of more than 24%. This is the kind of um, uh, impact that optimization can help you to achieve. This final case study is one that I was directly involved in. It was a, a great experience actually, working directly with some of our amazing customers uh, in the project. And you can see uh, the, the customers that were involved um, listed at, at the bottom of the slide here. I mentioned earlier that Design Builders optimization tools were first released in 2013. Well, this particular project was completed in 2015 as a submission for the ASHRAE Energy Modeling Competition that year. And optimization was right at the heart of the uh, project team's workflow. Here's the project context. A real 20 acre development site in Pittsburgh, including a 3 million square feet mixed use development. As for many inner city brownfield development sites, it presents the designer with a number of challenges and planning, planning issues and constraints, uh, not least tall surrounding buildings, a site footprint that requires creative spatial planning and, and many more. An important part of the client brief was that they wanted mixed mode cooling, utilizing natural ventilation to take advantage of the variable climate in Pittsburgh, which does provide opportunities for periods of natural ventilation cooling. The client also required the team to present fully costed solutions so that they could find the best trade-off between the construction cost and the environmental performance. So this is exactly the kind of problem optimization is designed to solve. There's a lot to say about this workflow, but I'll summarize it and keep it brief. It was essentially a three-stage design process to identify the best building form and HVAC systems using optimization, and then to fine tune the design with more focused simulation. In the first step, so that top row of, of the three bars that you can see there, the team assessed the building form and the orientation based on the, um, the, the client's uh, specification. An optimization study, including building orientation, was completed for each relevant form, and that guided us towards a rectangular building with an internal courtyard. This provided enhanced two-sided daylight and natural ventilation availability, and the courtyard was also seen as a, a great recreational space to improve well-being for occupants during uh, breaks. In the second step, the middle bar, 
Optimization we used to identify the best HVAC, lighting and PV systems to meet the building loads and to provide high levels of comfort. The optimization demonstrated that a ground coupled VRF system with heat recovery provided the best balance between cost and performance. Once that was selected, we ran a further optimization to fine tune the heating and cooling setback and natural ventilation cooling set point temperatures. So as you can see, optimization can be used to progressively fine tune the design so it is truly optimal according to the design brief. Once the optimizations in Design Builder were completed, the team used Design Builder's fully integrated daylighting and CFD tools to finesse aspects of the design. Overall, this workflow helped the design uh, team design a building that reduced predicted energy consumption by 64% compared to the ASHRAE 90.1 90, baseline and reduced energy costs by 46%. These are impressive results by any standard. This workflow was presented to the ASHRAE Energy Modeling Conference audience in 2015, and it actually won the Best Innovative Workflow Award. So uh, another shout out and a well done to, to the team there. Design Builders optimization tools have been significantly enhanced since then, and now provide even more functionality, including the ability to optimize on any key performance indicator you want, using the scripting tools mentioned earlier by Nishesh. So that covers the key concepts of optimization and including Nishesh's four projects illustrating how optimization can be used in a real world context to deliver a step change in building performance. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to find out more about Design Builder and our optimization tools, there are a range of free resources um, available on our website. And I'll just take you through a few of those uh, now. So if I go to the Design Builder homepage here and scroll down towards the, towards the bottom, you can see there's a, a section on case studies. So I can access the, the case studies there directly from the homepage. I'm just gonna select the international uh, tab just to filter out any UK specific stuff. Um, so, and you'll, on this page, you'll see a number of uh, optimization related case studies. So here's optimizing an eco-friendly house design. Um, here's the ASHRAE Lowdown Showdown competition from 2016, which was the, the year after the case study I just uh, discussed. Uh, and again, optimization was used as a, as a core part of the, of the workflow in there. Uh, there's one here on optimizing a low temperature chilled water plant. And um, there are others at the bottom, including uh, this, this is, there'll be more detail here on the case study that I just presented from 2015. Also freely available from Design Builders website um, is uh, or are a number of webinars that you can access from this uh, training menu here. So if I go to the, uh, the webinars page, and I'll just scroll down a touch, uh, these cover a range of optimization topics. I'll just point out some specific ones that, that might interest you um, related to optimization. So uh, here's the case study that, that I briefly introduced um, from Brendan Hall of CHA um, and how he used Design Builder to optimize a ground source heat pump system and the overall building. Um, a little further down, there are two webinars here on uncertainty and sensitivity analysis. Uh, and these relate also to optimization. So could be a, a useful resource. 
Uh, and then towards the, the bottom of the list, you can see the um, full webinars on the ASHRAE um, competition submissions at the bottom here. Okay, these free resources will, I'm sure, give you a, a great insight into optimization. And they can probably be really useful to help you assess whether optimization is something that you want to be able to offer to your clients. Once you've made that decision, you can fast track your learning on optimization with focused training. On that point, I'm delighted to announce that we've just released a one day optimization course. And when I say just, I mean literally in the last couple of days. Um, and we've made it available in an on demand online format. And you can access that directly. If you go to the training drop down and then go to the buy online training option here and select that, that will take you to the online training page. I'll scroll down, it's got some general details at the top. And here uh, is effectively where you can find out more about each of the um, e each of the packages um, or the you can access the, the, the whole content in one go. So specific to this webinar, we've just added this design builder optimization fundamentals content and if i click on the course here you can see a full description of what the course uh, includes it's an extremely cost effective way to fast track your learning about optimization and it's top tips and guidance from experts on what to do and also quite important what not to do will save you many hours of wasted time trying to figure it out for yourself. The course covers optimization content uh, concepts in more detail and then it gives you a, a pretty rigorous introduction into quickly and effectively setting up and running optimizations in Design Builder. As you saw in Nishesh's presentation, optimization results can yield powerful insights into what is driving both good and bad performance in your model. A really important part of the course covers interpreting the patterns in opt optimization result sets to help you identify these game-changing insights. And for those of you who already have a license to access our all packages, I've got some great news. The optimization content has been added to your package. So you will also be able to access this content for the remaining duration of your access license. Okay, so that's the end of the formal content, um, uh, the presentation content, and we'll now move into the questions phase. I'll just finish by reiterating that optimization's use of genetic algorithms makes it possible for you to assess the full range of design options and it does it in a commercially viable time frame for normal projects. That in turn helps you ensure that your designs are optimal, gives the design team full confidence that your recommendations are truly optimal, makes your client very happy that you've done everything realistically possible to optimize their building, and it also reduces your design risk.